Hi, Jim Bowers here on another YouTube video at Bowers95713 or Demon Seed. It's time for a few more tips and tricks for your DJI Phantom quadcopter. Don't forget to leave a comment. If you've got a question or anything that you'd like to know about the Phantom, leave a comment for me and I'll be glad to get back to you. This is a stock Phantom battery. The stock Phantom battery that comes with your unit when you buy it, this is a 2200 mAh 20C battery. It's still a 3S, so this battery, it's a good battery for the Phantom. It's very, very durable. It won't puff on you or anything, but it's not gonna give you the longest flight time. If you have a loaded Phantom, you know, with a gimbal and a, uh, and a camera, a GoPro on it, then this is only gonna give you about six minutes of flight time, so you might wanna consider moving up. This is the battery that I've been ranting and raving about. This is the Zippy 2800 30C 3S battery. If you're looking for a battery that'll last a lot longer than a stock DJI Phantom battery, consider getting that Zippy 2800 battery. It'll give you about two and a half more minutes of flight time and it won't puff on you, uh, won't give you any problems. It just happens to be a very durable, good all around long flight battery for the Phantom. It fits in the Phantom just fine, but it's a little bit tight at the door. So the, it's hard to get the cables in there. It's kind of a pain in the butt, but it's well worth it for the additional flight time that you're going to get. So what you do is, do what I did and that is notch your uh, battery door. You notice here I've got the battery door with my power wire coming outside through the side here. So all I did was notch the door here. All you do, do is just get an X-Acto knife and just shave it out. And I shaved mine out on both sides so I can plug in on either side. So here's a zippy battery. We take the zippy battery and just drop it in there. And then you notice it's almost completely in there, but it sticks out just a tiny bit. So in order to make it just a no-brainer and easy, I notch the battery door. So now when I close the battery door, it stays closed most of the time. There we go. There. Okay, so the battery door is closed. And you notice that's if there's a weak point in the Phantom, it's the damn battery door. That's the one thing that has always bugged me is this latch on the battery door and how funky it starts to get and doesn't want to stay locked. But uh, not your battery door and then just plug your Phantom in on the outside because you'll have your power wire coming out one side and your battery wire coming out the other side and just plug them in in the middle. And that's all you got to do. I have OSD on mine so I actually plug it in over here to the left. But if all you're doing is plugging in your battery, then your battery lead comes out here, your DJI Phantom lead comes out here, and you just plug them in in the center. That's all you gotta do. Here's my battery checker. You can buy this on Hobby King, and it's about 12 bucks or so on Hobby King, if I remember correctly. But this is a nice battery checker if you wanna check your batteries before every flight, which is a really good idea. You don't wanna take off with a battery that's low, because you might not have time to recover. So it's always a good idea to check your battery before you take off. This battery, we've got it plugged in. It's the Phantom battery, and you notice we've got 12.48 volts on it. So the battery condition is good, but the nice thing about this charger or this checker is it tells you what percentage of the battery you have left. This one has 96%, so we're good to go. If all you've got is your Phantom battery and you're looking to charge more than one battery at a time, you might want to consider getting one of these four station chargers for your car. You notice my charger just plugs into the back of my car, back here into a 12 volt receptacle. Most of them come with just uh, alligator clips that you would plug into your battery under your engine hood. But this is a high tech X4 charger you know, I highly recommend these high-tech chargers. It's a really good charger, very, very reliable and durable, but you can plug four batteries and charge four batteries all at one time using a charger like this. These are my goggles for my Phantom. This is a pair of Dominator goggles made by Fat Shark, and they're really good goggles. They have really high clarity, and they're probably 
two notches above their standard teleporter or their predator goggles. So the Dominator goggles are a really good pair of goggles to buy if you're going to get into FPV flying. These are teleporter goggles. These were the goggles that I first started out with. If you're just getting into FPV, for about $199 you can get a set of these teleporter goggles and they'll get you going in the hobby but the clarity and the definition is just not as good as what you'll get on the Dominator goggles. The antennas that I have on these, this is called a five turn helical antenna. It's made for distance. It's not real terrific when it's in close around you, but if you're flying out any distance away from you up to 5,000 feet or a mile or so, this antenna will really reach out there and bring you a good signal. Now that on there is the Immersion RC antenna. You can get those on Hobby King and uh, they're also a very good antenna and it's a good all around antenna. You can still get out to 3,000 feet, 3,500 feet, and, but it's especially good for FPV when you're flying in close, you know, within 600 feet or so of yourself. If you've got a vibration dampener on your GoPro, that isolates the vibrations between your quadcopter and the camera. This prevents the jello effect, so it takes away all the vibration in between the, the Phantom and the GoPro. Well, what happens is if you come in for a hard landing, this tends to separate or it pops off of these rubber balls that are on here. So what I did was I took zip ties and I put a zip tie right through the hole of the rubber ball and around and just attached it on all four corners all the way around. Now if I come in for a hard landing this doesn't pull out and I have to put that all back together again. So zip tie it. It's a good idea. Now the first thing you'll hear me talk about whenever I'm talking about phantoms is prop guards. The one thing that I highly recommend especially for all novices is put prop guards on your phantom. Now notice I don't have any prop guards here. Well, what I'm doing is an experiment with weight. I'm trying to cut absolutely every gram of weight that I possibly can off my Phantom to see how much flight time it's actually capable of. And I'm getting up to about 12 minutes altogether on a Zippy 2800 battery. Now. Even though I did take my prop guards off, and the prop guards are usually painted on the front. The front prop guards are yellow, the back prop guards are white. So in this case, in order to keep my orientation so that I always know which is the front and which is the back of the aircraft, I painted my propellers yellow. So that immediately tells me which is the front of the aircraft. Now if you do decide to paint your props, don't put a lot of paint on them because you don't want to throw it out of balance. Just put a light, light coat of paint on the props on the front side and that'll help you with your orientation. Now, if you were completely new at flying the DJI Phantom quadcopter and you've never flown one before, I want to tell you the easiest way to fly a Phantom is with goggles. There's no easier way to fly it than FPV with goggles. The reason for that is, is because when you're wearing goggles and flying the Phantom, it's literally like you're driving your car. So you're sitting in the driver's seat and driving that Phantom around. You always know where your left is, you always know where your right is, etc. Backing up, going forward. But if you're not wearing goggles, you're flying just line of sight. So if you get turned around and you're flying toward yourself, that means all your controls are reversed. Your left is your right and your right is, is your left. So if you're contemplating whether you want to use a ground station or goggles, my personal preference is go with the goggles. It's more immersive and it's more one-on-one -on -one and hands-on and it's totally exhilarating. It's a lot of fun to fly with goggles. These are the Dominator goggles that I'm wearing right now. So uh, they have teleporters, which are the beginner models, and uh, the Attitude uh, goggles, also made by Fat Shark. So check around online. Skyzone also makes a good pair of goggles, and you can uh, choose what's best suited for you. Here's another thing you'll notice on my quadcopter is I've got the extended landing gear legs on here. 
One of the things that I've always had a big problem with is when I rotate my Phantom down, it would point down and, and catch the corner of one of the landing gear legs in the shot. And when I'm shooting video, especially professionally, the last thing I want is for my prop guards or my landing gear legs to spoil a shot. So I ordered these extended landing gear legs, which come out further out to the left and to the right, and it, and it prevents that camera from getting into the landing gear legs when you're pointed downward. You can get these from acesdeals.com. I hear a lot of talk out there about the carbon fiber props for a DJI Phantom. I don't think I've ever seen a really good set of carbon fiber props that work on a DJI Phantom. I just haven't. I've tried them on my own and the one thing that they did do was they gave me a little bit more power but they also gave me increased vibration and no matter how much I balance them they're just a stiffer prop they don't flex like a stock DJI Phantom prop does. So the DJI Phantom stock props are made and engineered for the Phantom. They're the best prop to put on your Phantom as far as I'm concerned, so I would stick with them. The uh, alternative is, if you wanna upgrade your prop, if you've got a Phantom 1.1, a 1.1.1 and you want to move up you can put vision props on your Phantom the way to check it out is is if your prop nuts are silver and black that means that you've got counter rotating motor threads the threads that your prop goes down on top of are opposing you've got two that are clockwise and you've got two that are counterclockwise that's why your prop nuts are black and silver well, that means you can now put vision props on your Phantom. So just order a set of stock vision props and then you're going to do away with your prop nuts altogether. You'll be able to spin on those vision props, tighten them down really good with the wrench that came with your Phantom and those props are never going to come off in flight so you don't have to worry about accidentally losing a prop nut and tumbling to the ground. Now, if you're worried about what people call a flyaway, you need to stop worrying about it. A flyaway is when your quadcopter basically gets a software glitch or something happens that nobody even has figured out yet. But something happens and the quadcopter gets a mind of its own and just takes off and it just goes and goes until it crashes into something or you've lost it or you can recover it maybe who knows but that's what a flyaway is but I want to tell you though the chances of a flyaway are about one in 10,000 as long as you're doing all of the right things do a pre-flight check you know make sure you check your switches to make sure they're in the up position and you're not accidentally in manual mode or something um, make sure you've checked your battery and your battery is sufficiently charged um, if you're flying in GPS mode, you know, fly line of sight or somewhere around you until you're completely comfortable with your surroundings and your quadcopter. Just practice, practice, practice. If you do seem like you feel like you're getting a flyaway and you're, you just can't control it anymore, the first thing you want to do is one of two things either switch off your radio and let the Phantom do a return to home all by itself or if you've enabled the IOC which is home lock and course lock you can switch into home lock and then just pull back on the stick and the Phantom will track back toward you so those are the two things you can do if you do get into a flyaway situation one thing you can also do is switch into the manual mode I've had a couple of instances where I thought my Phantom was getting a mind of its own, so I switched into manual mode and regained control of it and then switched back into GPS mode. Now I don't know if I was having a true flyaway or not, but just to be safe, it doesn't hurt to enable the manual mode in the IOC NASA Assistant software so if you ever do have a flyaway condition you can always switch into manual mode to recover. Now you notice we're out here flying 
and my phantom is staying exactly right there. My radio is all the way over there on the ground and the phantom is staying right where it's supposed to stay. If your phantom is wandering all over the place, like further than within about three feet or so, then you may need to recalibrate your compass. But if your phantom is staying pretty much within a foot or so, then you're okay and you don't have to worry about your compass calibration. If you haven't flown your phantom yet, don't worry. It's not something that is so difficult that you can't master it. If you take your time and do the right things right out of the box, you won't have any problem flying your Phantom. The first things you want to do is your pre-flight checks. Make sure all your props are on completely tight and make sure you've got fresh batteries in your radio. Make sure your switches are in the up position or off. You know, you don't want uh, IOC enabled, so make sure your left switch is up and your right switch is up in the GPS position. And then just take off and get up to about six or seven feet and hover. And then if you want to learn how to fly, I have another video on Demon Seed called Novice. Check out that video and it'll give you your first flying look. All right, gang, I want to thank you for joining us. And I want to let you know that if you'd like to order our landing gear skids, these can really help you, especially if you're a novice. When a Phantom comes down and lands, they tend to want to tip. And if you're not, if you don't have prop guards on, you're going to chip your props and the props are very, very fragile. So if you don't have extra props, you might want to get some. Even if you do have prop guards, you want to try to not tip your Phantom when you're landing. So if you'd like, send us 20 bucks and we'll send you a set of these landing gear skids. They're made out of Lexan. They stick out an inch and a half on the front and the back and they, let, they weigh about 1.02 ounces. So incredibly light. So landing gear skids, a good modification for your Phantom. Send me an email to jimbowers at foothill.net and I'll set you up with PayPal and we'll get them right off to you. Thanks for joining us, gang. Now, I'm Jim Bowers. This is another YouTube video. Don't forget to subscribe and like my videos so I move up a little in the rankings. We'll see you later. Bye-bye.